So one of the things my husband introduced me to first um, about your work is the concept of the through line. Mm. And that's something that I've told so many patients about and so many colleagues, and I can see it. Like when I close my eyes, it actually, even when I'm not on the river, I can think about the future and, and it feels like a, like a magic pathway that I can just take now. Um, so I was hoping you could describe about like how that came to you, what it is, yeah. and also how you see it in times like we're in right now where there's yeah. a lot of polarization and a lot of fear. Yeah. Well, again, the river taught so much. And the, the thing about, I mean, there's so much river lessons, but the most, one of the most poignant lessons just came through me 10 years ago. And I find myself looking at, okay, class one boating, flat water canoe, easy to, class six, you don't run because you die. Mm -hmm. To run a class five, you can easily die. So to run a class five river, only the most expert boaters run a class five. And to be a, g a good boater, you have to be able to read everything. So you have to read the gargantuan hole that can eat, you know, you and everything, or the under the water, the shredder rocks that'll right. rip things apart. And you've got to know those big things and you've got to see the little things because if you don't see the little things, they'll spin you into one of the big ones. And the challenge of being a class five boater is you have to see all of those. And then you have to put all your attention on the through line. Where is the current most flowing? Because the river is always going downstream. And so where is the most benign way and the most powerful flow that I can stay aligned to? And if I focus on the obstacles, they become magnets. So how do I put my right. attention on the through line? And the metaphor for me is humanity is in a class five rapid. Yeah. And we have never been here before. No river runners ever run this class five rapid. Right. So it's be it's right on the edge of our arts. And humanity, most of humanity is in denial. Oh, that's not really a problem. Aren't they gonna take care of it? Yeah. And those who are looking are going, oh my gosh. And they're panicking because they know right. that all of life is on edge in this in this class five. Everything is threatened. Mm -hmm. And we have very few mature enough, we haven't yet cultivated our maturity to go, yes, 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 and where's the through line? And where's right. the through line? How exactly. do we do that together? And the corollary is that if we're paddling together, when somebody on the other side of the boat does something I don't understand, instead of wasting my time getting mad at them, I have to trust they could see something that I couldn't. So there may have been a rock in their way, so they didn't take a stroke because they couldn't. Right. So how do I not waste my time fighting them and vice versa? If I make a mistake, instead of everybody on that side of the boat wasting their time yelling at me, now we're going backwards because of my mistake and we are all in the same boat together. Mm -hmm. How do we put our attention on the through line? Now looking over our shoulder as best we can and keep breathing as best we can, keep honoring each other and trusting that we're each doing the best we can. Yeah and tease out of each other because we're going to, we, <laughs> when you push these edges, you learn lots. So yeah. we're in this class five together and we all get to learn and we get to tease out each of our own strengths and gifts. We get to trust each other's seeing because we need all of our seeing to make it through this, the caprice that uh, is ahead of us. I love that. And that we're in. And, oh, yeah. and the more I started talking about the through line with my patients and, and really focusing on that, the more actually it became fun. And it was like, it was like, oh, we can build skill with this. Like if we have this as a concept and we trust that we're all in the same boat and we trust that people are genuinely good, though maybe ignorant and misguided or traumatized in their own lives and making poor choices or what we can see yeah. to be poor choices. Yeah. Um, then we, we can just focus on this line together and then how do we, how does it become fun? Like, how do we develop skills? How do we develop savvy? Like, how do we, so that's kind of where I've been because with that concept, I think when COVID hit and all of that, it was hard to see the future and it's changing a little bit now, but I think still it's hard for us to see like, how are we going to make it through 
these times beyond COVID? How are we, how is the earth going to make it through? How are, how are the social injustices, you know, going to resolve? Are we ever going to live in peace as humanity? You know, these sort of questions. Um, well, you just gave me the gift, the reminder that when we were first starting Friends of the River, we had a meeting and there were 20 of us and we were all, and by the end of the half day, we had come up well with six mottos, save energy, save water, save rivers. And yeah. someone came up with the seventh and she said, and have fun doing it. Yes. And I forgot the other six and I realized that was the most important. It is the most important. And what draws most people to rivers is it's so fun. And right. even that scariness of running a rapid, you learn. And so learning to relax and have fun doing it. And yeah. <coughs> I think you're, you're, I mean, you beautifully said it. And, I, and I've not remembered to add that on to my, uh, ah, my well through good. line story because rivers are about fun. And yeah. all of a sudden you get to embody all of these things. And so, yeah, we've never been here before. You know, Claire has a line, my lovely wife has a line that when she first got a transmission that put her on her path, it said, the experiment. And she goes, what are you doing the experiment? And back at her came, call everything you do an experiment yes. because you can't possibly fail an experiment. And humans have this great fear of making mistakes. Right. Well, there's no mistakes if you're just doing experiments. So how do we have fun learning how to read the through line? Right. Do it together, we'll make mistakes together, but support each other and nurture each other to bring out our best and develop the skills we'll need to dance together through, whoa, these yep. amazing times we're in. And then celebrate when we get to the pool under the rapid before the next rapid comes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Sometimes uh, some rivers have uh, less time to uh, celebrate. So you get to pull into even tight little ladies to do that because some rivers right. and it feels like we're in times where it just is continuing to draw us in. You know, that's a really interesting when you say tight little eddies. So um, just to, to explain for someone who might know, an eddy is a quiet area behind usually rocks or on the side, sometimes in the middle of the river that, that you can, because since the river is always in flow, it's tricky. Yeah. So there are these places to get out of flow and those are the eddies. But um, I'm thinking about like just that, that big rapid and that through line. And then that's a new thing for me to think about is like tight little eddies, like slip behind a rock. Have you thought about that with the through line? Well, I, I mean, I have only because again, Rivers are all different. A lot of the rivers we love the most are big drops and a big pool. Right. Big drops and a big pool. But I remember going by the Payette and it was like, whoa. Oh yeah, we did there, that. <laughs> there are no big eddies, right? right. There, there might have been tightest eddies that you could barely hold on to, right. Right? right? So I don't know where humanity's at. This is a class five rapper we've never been at before. Right. Many of our fellow passengers don't even know they should be holding a paddle yet because they're Oh, but I was upstream. I could just keep take pictures right. of everything and look at everything. And now I'm needed. No, not me, right. because I don't have these skills. Right. So, so yes to celebrating in between. Yes, yes, yes. And sometimes we may only get a few moments to celebrate. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And yet, yes to celebrating. Whoa! Yeah. Look what we. What did we just learn here? Right. And okay. And our, our skills are stretching even if we don't have time to celebrate them with with every sacred breath we're taking, we're learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to be able to honor, oh, even with as we bumped in with that experiment, oh, mm -hmm. that didn't quite work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in a slightly different way next time. Right. And that's just an interesting think of thing to think of with the through line that maybe the through line might be portaging and walking along the side. Honoring every I mean to me, there's usually a thousand ways down. There's one main line usually, or three right. main lines, but there's a thousand ways to go, and that includes portaging. And so, yeah. read the water as best we can, use our instincts as best we can, right. and know that we, we're going to get pulled into, you know, even portages can sometimes be much more horrendous than even the Absolutely. waterfall. So, <laughs> and sometimes more dangerous. Yes. You know, so it's, yeah. it's a. Yeah, and, and just, I think, um, respecting where people feel comfortable. Right. Yeah. yeah, and how they want to 
go through this journey. Yeah. Well, and inviting and enticing everyone to step beyond because we we inherited right. thinking we're smaller and we're vastly more. And mm. so how yeah. do we, t you know, to me it was amazing watching people go down the river. It's like, oh, I mean, I could die, right? And and the river was usually much more forgiving than they would have imagined. So it was a brand new experience. So sometimes with new experiences, we go, I can't do that. And yet, you know, what's that line of, uh, we're in these most extraordinary times and it almost look impossible. And yet, if we were called to be here on whatever level, Absolutely. we were given more talent than we knew. So even if, you know, Marianne Williamson has that line, we far more fear our light than our shadow. Right. And when someone, we love being our shadow because I can't do it. I mean, you, oh, you're better than me and right. all, you know, the, the othering and me stepping into my voice. Right. Oh no, they have a better voice than me. Or they sing better than I, they dance better. And, and again, we're at times that are calling all of us to step into terrain we've never been in before. Right. This class five rapid, you know, mm -hmm. humanity may not make it. Mm -hmm. And no time like the present to learn how to have fun doing it, do as best we can, and be aware of our limits and then be ready to transcend our what we inherited of everyone telling us we're smaller than Absolutely. we really are and be ready to pay attention to our own unique gifts mm -hmm. yeah. and do the best we can and no mistakes right just an experiment <laughs> oh wow that didn't Absolutely. work very well <laughs>